Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today we're diving into the basics of network configuration using Cisco Packet Tracer. If you're new to networking or just getting started with Packet Tracer, this video is for you. We'll walk through setting up a simple network, configuring IP addresses, and making sure everything is working correctly. All right, let's start by setting up our basic network. We'll need a router, a switch, and a couple of PCs. First, let's add our devices router and a 2960 switch so you can find them in the network devices section under routers and switches for our pcs we'll go to the end devices tab and grab four computers now that we have our devices in place we need to connect them using the right cable since we're connecting a router to a switch we'll use a straight through internet cable And for the PCs, we'll connect them to the switch using the same type of cable. With our physical connection set up, the next step is configuring the IP addresses and testing connectivity. Let's jump into that now. When you first start a Cisco router, it goes through a boot process, loading its operating system and checking its hardware. Once the router boots up, it will ask us if we want to enter the initial configuration dialog. This is an automatic setup process that Cisco provides for quick configurations. But since we'll be manually setting everything up ourselves, we'll type no and press enter. This takes us to the command line interface, the CLI, where we have full control over the router settings. First, we type enable and press enter. This takes us from user mode to privileged exec mode, which gives us access to important configuration commands. Next, we type configure terminal or just conf t for short. Now we're in global configuration mode where we can make changes to the router settings. To set up IP addresses, we need to enter the interface configuration mode. We'll be configuring interface G00. Now we're inside the interface configuration mode where we can assign an IP address. We'll type 10101 with a subnet mask of 255-255-2550. Finally, we need to enable the interface by typing no shutdown. If everything is working correctly, we should see a message saying the interface is now up. We'll repeat these steps for other interfaces as needed. Ten two zero one two fifty five two fifty five two fifty five zero. Ten two zero one two fifty five two fifty five two fifty five zero. 
Now that we've assigned IP addresses to our router's interface, we need to verify that everything's configured correctly. To do this, we use the command This command gives us a quick overview of all interfaces, showing their IP addresses, status, and whether they're up or down. Let's break it down. We can see that our assigned IP addresses are correctly displayed under the IP address column. The status should say up and protocol should also be up if everything is working. If any interface is down, it might be because we forgot to type no shutdown or there's an issue with the connection. Now that we verified the router's configuration, let's move on to setting up the PCs. Since we haven't set up a DHCP server on the router yet, we'll be assigning IP addresses manually, also known as static IP configuration. I'll cover DHCP in another video, but for now, let's configure the PCs with static IPs. To do this, we'll click on each PC, go to the desktop tab, and select IP configuration. Here we have static and on the static section, enter the following values. 10, 1, 0, 100 for the IP address with something max of 255, 255, 255, 0. Default gateway 10, 1, 0, 1, which is the router's interface we just configured. We'll repeat this process for all PCs, giving each a unique IP address within the 10100-24 network. This ensures that all devices can communicate properly with the router and each other. So all PCs on this side also gets a unique IP address in the 10200-24 network. With that done, our PC are now properly configured. In the next video, we'll automate this process by setting up a DHCP server on the router. But for now, let's test connectivity. Now that we configure static IP addresses in our PC, let's verify the settings using the IP config slash all command. This command shows us detailed network information, including the assigned IP address, the subnet mask, the default gateway, and even the MAC address of the network adapter. So now that we confirmed our settings, let's test the network connection using the ping command. We'll start by pinging our default gateway to ensure the PC can communicate with the router. If everything is set up correctly, we should see replies from 10101 confirming that our PC can reach the router. And as you can see, it is a success.
Now, let's check if our PC can communicate with another PC in the same network. We'll ping the 10-1-0-100. And we're getting replies, another success. This confirms that both PCs can talk to each other within the same network. Now, we'll ping a PC in our second network, which is on a different subnet. And look at that, we're getting replies. This means our router is properly forwarding traffic between networks allowing devices in different subnets to communicate. This confirms that our network setup is working perfectly. In the next video, we'll take things further by setting up a DHCP server so devices can get IP addresses automatically. So make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you don't miss it. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to like this video and drop a comment below if you have any questions. I'd love to hear your thoughts. Thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next one.